May the force be with you. In this presentation, I will reveal what is the Merkaba. Then once you know what the Merkaba is, and you know what the Essene Tree of Life is, then I can reveal to you how the Essene Tree of Life is related to the Merkaba. The Merkaba was popularized by two books written by Drenvalo Melchizedek called The Ancient Secret of the Flower of Life, Volume 1 and 2, and also Living in the Heart, which explains a more updated method for activating the Merkaba. In The Ancient Secret of the Flower of Life, Drenvalo talks about how he met a being known as Thoth, and Thoth gave him instructions for constructing various forms of sacred geometry, which led him to the understanding that these geometries surround the human body as an energy field. Now, according to ancient Essene lore, the sacred geometry that was preserved by the Egyptians was actually brought to Egypt from Ethiopia by the Essenes who had just come out of the Garden of Eden. At that time in ancient Egypt, there were many dark wizards practicing the black magic arts. And so as a response, the ancient Essenes of Ethiopia traveled to Egypt in order to uplift the magical teachings with white, incorruptible magic. The actual name of ancient Egypt was Kemet, which means black, and it's likely that it was named that because of the black magical arts that were being practiced there. And Kemet is where we get the word alchemy, which is related to the hermetic principles that are associated with Thoth Hermes Trismegistus. Many scholars and mystics associate both the Egyptian god Thoth and the Greek god Hermes as one and the same, but the ancient Essenes in their lore describe that there are actually two different beings who are working together. Thoth was a mystical bird, sort of like a phoenix, who inhabited the Garden of Eden, which was a heavenly realm of planet Earth, wherein the beings who reside there have a more ethereal form of flesh. And Hermon was a wizard who became known as Hermes, who actually rode on the back of this bird from the Garden of Eden in Ethiopia up to Kemet, carrying mystical secrets of sacred geometry and other wizardly practices. So anyway, what is the Merkaba? The word Merkaba exists in both Hebrew and Egyptian. In Egyptian, it means light body vehicle, Merkaba. In Hebrew, which is the native language of the Essenes, Merkaba means chariot or chariot of fire. As you can see, in both of these definitions, the word Merkaba has the connotation of a sort of spiritual vehicle. And this spiritual vehicle is really an energy field that surrounds your physical body. It's your light body. And when activated, it allows you to travel between dimensional realms or heavenly worlds. It can also awaken dormant psychic abilities or spiritual powers. Drunvalo has many stories of his ability to affect the weather or to interact with wild animals, spontaneous healings. And this relates to biblical stories of Moses and Elijah and Yeshua and others, such as Elijah, who was able to call upon lightning. Moses was obviously able to separate the waters of the Red Sea and have the sun dry the sea floor so they could walk across it. And then immediately after, have the water cover it back up so that the soldiers who were coming after them couldn't catch them. Or other things like, you know, walking on water. Possibly levitation. and other magical abilities that seem impossible to our current dense physical life. I don't, I don't believe it. Mac, it's why you fail. No, really, what is the Merkaba?
The first geometry is a sphere of light, according to Drunvalo. Then through the center of the sphere of light, running vertically, passing through the human body from head to toe, is what Drunvalo calls the prana tube. Next, within the sphere is a toroidal field, or the shape of the torus. It's like the donut shape, and also the shape of a tree which is why the Essenes called it the tree of life, because it's shaped like a tree. Okay, now we get to the star tetrahedrons. In Drunvalo's early work, he thought there was only one star tetrahedron, made up of two tetrahedrons, one pointing up and one pointing down, and each one rotated in the opposite direction. So the top one would rotate clockwise, and the bottom one would rotate counterclockwise. But later he found this wasn't true, that there were actually three star tetrahedrons. One star tetrahedron is spinning clockwise. Another star tetrahedron is spinning counterclockwise. And then there's another star tetrahedron that is stationary. And each of these three are centered on the prana tube within and surrounded by the toroidal field and the sphere of light. He goes on about other energy fields that surround the body, but Drunvalo teaches that the energy fields that come after the star tetrahedron will be revealed in a higher dimension, so it's not really important that we focus on these various other geometries.